morning. I was very tempted to bring my phone out this morning and take a picture because the sunlight coming in through that back window is just absolutely stunning, but I didn't. Anyways, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It is so good to see you here this morning. If you're visiting us today, I am Pastor Andrea Paulson. I'm Associate Pastor here at First St. Paul's, and we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. And if you are watching either on our YouTube channel or listening on the radio, we pray that this worship service is a blessing for you today. We have a few announcements this morning as we begin our worship service. First of all, please uh, note that we are collecting food items for the food pantry throughout Lent. Continue to bring those each week. And then also out in the fellowship gathering area, we have a basket for Easter candy. And so as you're out and about in the next couple weeks, and if you see some individually wrapped Easter candy, we would sure appreciate that for the Easter egg hunt that will be on April 20th. And so uh, please note that and we appreciate those donations. Next Saturday is our fifth grade communion retreat for this in the Seder meal. This is for all fifth graders who desire to take or receive their first communion. And so if you are a fifth grader, the parent of a fifth grader, grandparent, relative, or if you know a fifth grader, make sure that they're signed up for that retreat. It starts at 10 a.m. and it's a fun day. And then in the evening, we have the Seder meal. And um, please call the church office to RSVP. And again, uh, kids cannot take that first communion until they've attended the retreat or the makeup. Senior High is fundraising for our missions. We're going to Jamaica this summer. And uh, if you would like to collect change for the Be the Change campaign, as soon as I find the water bottles, they'll be out again. I think that, that we've, we got 250 of them when we first started and we've used these for a few years now. And so we appreciate so much the support. But if you would like to just st start collecting that change, we do appreciate it. We have Wi-Fi in this room now, which is wonderful and exciting, but don't check out during the service. Maybe pull up your phone Bibles, but you'll notice that the Wi-Fi password is available in your bulletin. Great facts that Alexa continues to put in the bulletin to remind us of some of these things that we do in the church. And so today, Lent doesn't actually end on Easter. It ends on Good Thursday. So that's an interesting fact for us today. There is a mission meeting tonight at 5 o'clock for the mission team. College students, if you have to go back to college, Abby, you can go back to college. College students can wait. Abby's like, awesome. Um, college students will catch up here um, this summer, but everybody else, yeah, that is a mission meeting at 5 o'clock today. I believe that is all of our announcements. At this time, I invite the congregation to please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to welcome one another to worship today. Hi, Gavin. And our service continues with the, uh, the confession and forgiveness on the front page of the bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now, friends, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. This is good news for us today, my friends. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to each of you and as a reminder for myself that all of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our opening hymn is 638, Blessed Assurance. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord have mercy Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. God, who abounds in mercy and steadfast love, be gracious to us and bring us again with regretful hearts and steadfast faith to hold fast to the unchanging truth of your word, who is Jesus Christ, our son, your Son. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, that through the words of Scripture and the sermon, we might be led to Jesus, who alone is the way and the truth and the life. Amen. The congregation may be seated. First reading today may be found on page 439 in the Pew Bible. Page 439. I'll be reading from Psalm chapter 31, verses 1 through 8. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Here ends the first reading. The second reading may be found on page 992. I'll be reading from 2 John chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I was overjoyed to find some of your children walking in the truth just as we have been commanded by the Father. But now, dear lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment just as you have heard it from the beginning. You must walk in it. This ends the second reading. Please stand for the gospel. scripture passage today is actually from John 5, and this can be found on page 866 of the Pew Bibles you have in front of you. Again, it's from John 5, and it is on page 866. And this is the Holy Gospel according to John, the fifth chapter. Starting at the first verse. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porticos. And in these porticos lay invalids. They were blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there a long time, and he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way to the pool, someone else steps in ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, stand up, take up your mat and walk. At once the man was made well and he took up his mat and he began to walk. Now the day was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, the man who made me well said to me, take up your mat and walk. They asked him, who is this man that said it to you? 
Now the man who had just been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. But later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. This is the gospel of our Lord. Our hymn is number 611, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Congregation may be seated. This week we continue our with our Walk This Way series, and I just wanted to take a second before we begin to thank you all for the, the kind comments and encouragement about me sharing my testimony last week. That was incredibly vulnerable, and yet um, that's what we're called to do is share our stories and be vulnerable and take off those masks, but I definitely appreciate it. I had somebody this week say to me, how did you not cry? I said, you didn't feel the lump in the throat and feel where I, in, inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but thank you so much for your grace and your mercy, and I hope that we can continue to share our stories with one another. Anyways, we continue with Walk This Way, and two weeks ago, we talked about Judas and the betrayal, and how Jesus loves us even when and as we betray him. And last week, we talked about the hemorrhaging woman and how she just longed to touch the hem of Jesus. And after she was healed, Jesus called her out to fess up. And what was she going to do? Was she going to hide in fear? Or was she going to stand and say why she reached and how he had healed her? And today, we turn our attention to another person, another story of one who walked this way. Or I suppose we should start by how he didn't walk because he couldn't. In utter hopelessness. Has anybody ever felt utter hopelessness? In utter hopelessness, a person who could do nothing about the situation was collapsed on a street called Mercy. Or rather, collapsed by a pool in a house called Mercy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for these perfectly imperfect people in scripture that you have used through your perfect word to teach us about ourselves and most importantly about your son, Jesus. 
Today, as we learn about the paralytic laying at this pool, we pray that you would help us to see ourselves in this situation and accept and receive the words you say to us. And now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight. You alone are our God, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. One of the fun things about the story has been to set up the scene. I mean, many of these people in scripture, most of us have learned about since we were three years old in Sunday school. We've heard about Judas. We've heard about the hemorrhaging woman. We've learned about this pool called Bethesda. And so it's been very exciting to dig in and to learn a little bit more rather than just kind of glaze in for the overarching picture. And so Let's get into it. If you want to open your Bibles to John 5, I encourage you to do that. And now we have Wi-Fi, so you can get the phone Bible. (laughs) But let's get into it. The scene today. Jesus is going to Jerusalem for a feast. Much like we come to church at Christmas and we come to church on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday, those high festival days, Jesus is going to Jerusalem for what would have been a high festival day for the Jews. So he's following with his traditions and his habits, but it's gonna be a celebration. And John 5 tells us, I'm gonna read out of my Bible real quick here, so it might be a little bit different than yours. Now there, in verse two, there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda. So that is like if somebody came to our church and said, could you tell me where the coffee shop is? We would say there is in Hastings next to the bookstore, the Blue Moon. (laughs) So that's kind of the idea is that it's laying out where in Jerusalem this place is. Any else? I like Blue Moon and the biscotti. (laughs) So So John wants us to know this, but the reason he wants us to know this is not about the pool. And it's not about where it's located, it's the name. The name of this place that was surrounded by porticos or porches, or mine says colonnades, is mercy. So there is a pool in a house called mercy. Just let that sink in for a moment. And all of these people, the lame, the invalid, the paralyzed, are laying around a pool in a house called Mercy, waiting to be healed. The gospel doesn't really tell us why they are, but that's where they are. But But there's an ancient explanation that scholars kind of have said that's probably accurate. And what has happened and what they think happened is that the the waters would move. And when the waters moved, for whatever reason they did, they believed that the first person into the water would be healed. Okay? The first to enter the waters would be healed, and so they all lay by the pool waiting for healing by being the first one there, by what they could do. And among these, one who was unwell, one who had been there 38 years. That's not, that, the hemorrhaging woman now has nothing on this guy. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. This guy has been laying by a pool in a house called Mercy for 38 years. And what did we just learn? To get healed, you have to get into the water and he can't move. Collapsed in a house called Mercy. Well, Jesus arrives on the scene. And much like in John 4, when he meets the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus already knows the situation. Jesus already knows how long he's been sick. He has the supernatural power and knowledge to know this. He doesn't wait to be recognized. He doesn't wait to be approached. That's a good thing. What would have happened? Guy can't move. (laughs) He simply says to the man, do you want to get well? The underlying question there for us this morning and and for him is, but not just do you want to, but are you willing to? Now, the guy, this, this invalid laying there, does not recognize that Jesus could be the one that heals him. He doesn't know who Jesus is. He doesn't know that Jesus has done miracles. He doesn't know that Jesus has revealed himself already as I am. That's clear to us in verse seven when it says, sir, not Lord, not Messiah, not Jesus, not, hey, what's up, bro? (laughs) 
Sir, he doesn't know. And so instead of answering that question, do you want to be made well? He starts explaining why he can't be. I can't get into the pool. I need somebody to help me. And every time I try to get into the pool, I'm not fast enough because I'm invalid and people beat me to that. Somebody always is beating me to being healed. This man has his own ideas about how healing can happen and he shows no sign that Jesus will heal him, none at all. Jesus ignores this. Jesus ignores that the man doesn't answer the question. Did you note that? The man doesn't say, yes, I want to get well, or no, that's all right, I'm good here. He answers reasons why he can't. So Jesus ignores that he doesn't answer the question, and he ignores the lack of faith, and instead he says in verse 8, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. The very thing that this man cannot do, Jesus commands him to do, and in verse 9 it says, at once a.k.a. immediately. Like the creative word of God at the very beginning that spoke life, as soon as he says, get up, he can get up immediately. The cure is instantaneous and complete immediately. There's no mention of the man's faith. There's no room for it. He doesn't even know Jesus' name. While he was waiting for his own methods of healing, Je Jesus stepped in and did it. Get up, take your mat, and walk. And he does, he does it physically, gets up and walks. But the question is, will it change him beyond his ability to walk? So like the hemorrhaging woman and like Judas, we have some things in common with the paralytic at Bethesda. We are all in need of healing, every single one of us. Nobody is exempt. Whether it is physical, something in our bodies needs healing, or whether it is relational with a spouse or with a child or a friend or a grandchild or you name it, there is some kind of relational healing. Some of us need emotional healing and some of us are desperate for spiritual healing. In some way, shape, or form, we are the man laying by the pool waiting to be healed. Some of us just showed up just recently, this is new, but some of us have been in need of healing for so long we are nearly paralyzed by it. We all need healing. We also all have our own ideas of how healing can happen, which is a short way of saying we keep looking at the pool and not for the Savior. Or maybe we recognize that Jesus can heal, and, but it's, instead of saying, yes, Jesus, heal me your way, what we're saying is, can you jump into my pool? I like my pool, Jesus. Can you heal me like my way? Can, can you heal like the things that I want healed the way I want it done? I mean, my water's warm. <laughs> In both cases, my friends, the healing has not happened for us. And we continue to wade in our pools of hopelessness. We all need healing and we all have our own ideas about how healing can happen. We also have to respond. We all are called to respond to the question, do you want to be well? And we all do that by explaining how we can't. But the best part of all these things we have in common, that we need healing, that we have our own ideas of healing, that we all have to answer the question is, do you want to be well? Is that we all have a savior who says, hey, get up, take up your mat and start walking. We all have that. But will it change us? See, the truth is that for each of us, Jesus is already on the scene. He's already shown up, whether we recognize him or not, whether we uh, um, greet him with Jesus, Savior, Messiah, or like, hey, sir. He already knows how we long for healing. Did you know that? 
He already knows what our sins are, both known and unknown. He already knows our guilt and our shame. He already knows how our self-image is crumbling. He already knows how our marriage is gasping for breath. He already knows how our kids challenge us every day. He already knows how our addictions are flaring up again. He already knows that we're angry at God. He knows. He knows how desperate and desolate and down we feel sometimes. He knows we are tired and weak and worn out. He knows we're fatigued from endless searching and swimming in pools. He knows we're disoriented and he knows we feel defeated. Good Lord, praise be to Jesus. He knows and he sees and let me be clear that he does not condemn. See, he knows and he doesn't cast judgment. He listens to our story and he takes our responses and our excuses and our reasons. He knows the condition and our needs and he meets us right where we're at, collapsed in a house called mercy. And he really doesn't care that we don't answer the question or lack the faith. He meets us collapsed with compassion and mercy and kindness and tenderness and love and hope. I collapsed on a street of mercy and I found you. This house called mercy looks like a cross. And it's something we so easily forget in our journey of faith. The cross was and is and forever will be God's response to our explanations and excuses. The cross was and forever will be God's response to our lack of faith. The cross was and is and forever will be the equivalent of God knowing we aren't answering the real question but attending to it anyways. The cross was and is and forever will be God through the death and resurrection of his son Jesus, our Savior saying, get up, pick up that mat and walk in new life. Rise up, get up, get up from your place of despair. Take up, take up whatever it is that you cling to, that you hold to, that's become a symbol of your need for healing. For the man at Bethesda, it was his mat. For some of us, We know exactly what our mat is this morning. Take up, get up out of despair. Take up, get rid of whatever it is that you're holding on to that keeps you there and walk in new life. So what is our response to God's mercy? I mean, the man, he rose up from despair. We can rise up from despair. And some of us have done that. The man took up his mat, his symbol in that chain. We too can take up that mat and break the chains that hold us back in despair. And the man walked and we too can walk. But the thing to really consider this weekend is, are we rising in mercy to just walk back to our despair again? Or are we rising in mercy to walk in new life? Because honestly, there's a movie that I've shown kids throughout the years and and ministry, and we'll probably do it here. It's called To Save a Life. But there's this poignant question that the teenage character asks when he attends church for the, same t- for the first time. What's the point of all of this if you aren't gonna let this change you? What is the point of rising up and getting rid of your mat and walking if it's not gonna change you? And so for Monday, I want to remind all of us that he knows us. Jesus knows us, he sees us, he's aware of our need, and he speaks mercy and healing over us. The cross covered all of it. Every bit, the cross covered it. Let the mercy and love of Jesus change you. He's calling each of us, get up out of despair. He's calling you to let go of the symbols of your suffering, and he's calling you to walk in new life certain that in him that healing can be instantaneous. My friends, rise up, take up your mat, and walk. Our hymn is number 744, Lord Be Glorified.
we consider, continue our service with the Apostles' Creed printed on your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we now receive our offering.
the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. God of abundant grace, guide your church to look upon people as you look upon them, with compassion and as deserving of mercy. Shape us, Lord, to be worthy ambassadors of Christ, extending healing to all. Hear us, O God. We pray, Lord, for our farmers and ranchers as they continue to overcome the flooding in their fields and in their homes. God, we pray for our local farmers as they prepare for a season of planting, Lord. Would you be near them? Would you provide for them? Would you remind them of your goodness? Hear us, O oh God. Provide relief for those suffering and in pain today, especially Dean Hansen, Pat Olson, and Alice Kruger. Grant wisdom to healthcare workers who seek di to diagnose ailments and bring healing to patients. And remind us, Lord, that you alone are the master physician. Hear us, O God. In thanksgiving for those who have died in faith, especially Helen Bloom, that the grace of Christ in her life would guide us in our vocation as Christians throughout the world, let us pray, have mercy, O God. Ease the pain of our trauma, Lord. Ease the pain of our hurts, our brokenness, our shame, and our stigmas. Change our hearts so that we may rise up, pick up our mat, and walk. Hear us, O God. Invite your whole company of saints in, into eternal joyful feasting. When we question your mercy, soften our hearts to receive the gift of faith and love. Hear us, O oh God. Would you reveal your will as you receive our prayers and conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, we pray that you would remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
As a reminder, the adult forum is meeting today and there's a special guest from Crossroads. I just wanted to remind you of that. I'm sorry, I forgot that in the announcements. So please do make your way to that adult forum as members of Crossroads will be there to share about their ministry. And now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 807, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.